Hi, it's Corrine for Wild Orchid Crafts, and today I'd like to share this completed mini album with you. I have a full start to finish on this video. I will play that here in just a moment. It is not a mini album tutorial. If you're looking for a mini album tutorial, check the description box. I have a video where I show how you can make any size album that you'd like. This album is seven by six and three quarters. The inside pages are six and a half by six and a half, and I use this beautiful paper pad from my mind's eye. Everyone has a story to tell. And this is a six by six paper pad that I got from Hobby Lobby. The base of my album, which I thought went really well with this paper collection is black, as you can see. And I did use a border piece of paper. I think this is basil paper, pink. And then of course I bordered a, a mat as you can see here in black and then I used this really pretty paper. I used lots of gorgeous gorgeous products from Wild Orchid Crafts. To me they make absolutely everything a little bit prettier. So I tried to keep the inside of this album very clean. I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, the outside album, I used this scallop Borders, I think it's the Curved Borders 1 by Spellbinders, and I did a pink layer and a black layer, both on the top and the bottom. I used this cream color paper that I ran through with an emb embossing folder. I added some gorgeous Guy Pure Lace in white from Wild Orchid Crafts. All of this beautiful product is Wild Orchid Crafts. Be sure to check both the description box and my blog for a list of everything that I've used on this album. And I'll also link Wild Orchid Crafts Facebook, YouTube channel, as well as their store. I hope you stop by and check them out. They have just the most amazing product. So here I use some pretty flory flowers and I also tucked in some large rosebuds in both the two-tone pink and ivory and also just the white. I added some hip rosebuds here and there. I added some rose leaves some flat back pearls and they are self-adhesive but I like using them if I'm using them on the front of an album I like to take the um, glue part off and add some glossy accents to stick them down and then these are some of my favorites to use these are the flat back glitter balls I like tucking just a few of those in and then I finished it off with these beautiful pearl loop sprays these are some of my favorites also these are like a must-have in my stash so let me give you a little bit closer look. Here I have a, a large or a small gardenia and it comes with I think four layers. I always separate them and it gives them a little bit lower profile. I like doing that and then you get more. You can get two uses out of one flower. I added one of their flat back pearls to the center of that. Some more of the little pretty flory flowers here and here. And this piece here, I did add some chipboard underneath, so it does have a little bit of dimension to it. Really pretty in real life. On the side, I just added a little door pole with some more of the Wild Orchid Craft flowers. This I just had in my stash. Left the back plane. And like I said, I, I wanted to, it was hard for me not to add flowers to this album, but my goal of this album was to keep it very simple perfect just to add four by four photos. So on the front and back cover, I did make a pocket out of black cardstock, as you can see. I did also border it. Because I'm using six by six papers, I needed a border to fill this in. So I used that same pink basil paper. I added just a simple mat. These are four and a half by four and a half. So this entire album will hold perfect four by four photos. I added some glitter tape to go with the gold foil look. And then again, these are four and a half by four and a half. Yeah, um, perfect for a four by four photo. And every page is a pocket page. I use this Martha Stewart punch to give me a nice border for the page. And the mats are six and a half by six and a quarter. So they'll hold several smaller photos or a large photo on both the front and back side or journaling as well. So again, each one just has a pullout mat and the same border paper. It's a really pretty collection.
And again, same thing on the last page, I added a mat to it. So I hope you stay tuned for the full start to finish on it. Like I said, check the description box if you're looking for a mini album tutorial. It's the same way I make all my mini albums, but you can make them in whatever size that you wanted. I hope you've enjoyed and please stop by Wild Orchid Crafts. Check out all their amazing products that they have. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for staying tuned for the start to finish on this. Like I mentioned, this is not a tutorial, but I will walk you through my process. Right now, I picked out my paper pad, and now I'm making my pages where I'm scoring them on the edges, mitering the corners, and then I will use my bone folder to fold, to fold them and make sure they have a nice crease. I'm scoring them down, and then I will add the back piece to it, and that'll give me a pocket. I've already made a few other pages. I'm just showing you two of them on camera. I like to use wet glue in the corners because you have to work really fast with the hot glue and you can't get the corners really well. So I like to use both. The wet glue will ensure that I make sure those corners are adhered down. So here I'm going to do my hinge. I'm using a version of Kathy Orta's hinge. I'm scoring for a three three, um, I'm trying to remember here, a three eighth of an inch gusset in between. And I decided at this point to go ahead and make five pages for my album. So I just started out with the 11 inch paper and then I cut it down to the size that I need. So I'm using some Viva Las Vegas Miracle Tape and I'm adding it to my hinges. Again, making five, enough for five pages. So I'll burnish those down remove my tape and just fold it back and forth. If you're looking for a mini album tutorial, check the description box. I have a very detailed tutorial on how I make my albums and it's hoping to explain the concept of how to make mini albums. That way you can make them in any size that you want. Like this one, the pages are going to be six and a quarter square. So once you know how to make a mini album, you can change it up to any size that you want. So I'm not now adding tape to both sides of the hinges. This entire mini album took me about two and a half hours to make. Once you know how to make them, you can make them super quick. And just depending on how much detail or how much time you put into the inside pages will determine how long it'll take you to make a mini album. So now I'm using one quarter inch tape to adhere down the covers that are going to wrap around my chipboard and determining the size of my spine. I didn't know what size spine I was going to have before, so I waited to cut down the spine piece until after my hinge was made. And now I'm going to add my tape around my chipboard. I like to add two pieces to the side that's going to be adhering to the Tyvek. And I'm not shy with my tape. I use a lot of tape. I want to make sure that this mini album stays put together. So here's a used piece of Tyvek. I save any used pieces and recycle them. It really does, it's not necessary, you don't have to use that on an album, but it really does help to secure where the book is opening and closing. So I'm using a little half inch template that I made for myself, that way I could adhere down my spine, and now I'm adding both the front and back cover, again using a template that I made. You want to leave a little gap in between where your cover piece meets your spine piece. That way your book, your papers won't crack when you're opening and closing your book. So I'm also using wet glue. Again, I'm not shy with glue. I want to make sure that everything is adhered down very well. I'm using that same template to cut off the excess papers on the end because you only need about a half inch gap all the way around. And now I'm measuring out, I'm using the perfect ruler to measure out what I need to cut off. I'm going to add my tape all around the border, press it down with my bone folder, and then I'll go ahead and miter those corners. That'll help with any bulk when you fold it. So just kind of work those pieces, crease them, make sure that they bend, and then really press them down and use your bone folder. I'm tucking in those corners again to make sure I end up with nice corners, nice mitered corners. And now I'm adding tape right around where the book open and closes. So right by the hinges. That is really important because if you don't have it really adhered down well, which you'll see I add a lot of tape here, when you open and close your book, it's going to bubble. So you really want to make sure it's adhered down well. So you'll see me add a lot of tape, even some ATG tape, right around there where it opens and closes. 
I've made it before where I forgot to add the tape there and it bubbles and you have to rip it up and add tape anyway. So I like to go ahead and add my in, excuse me, my hinge now and then my papers afterwards. That way I can kind of adjust the papers to make sure that it's perfectly straight. And then once you get your first one down, you can use that as a guide to add the rest of your papers down. So I'm just removing the piece from one side, pressing it down and then removing the other side. Here are all my, my mind's eye. I believe it's called this story. I showed it in the very beginning of the video. I didn't have, these are six by six papers and my pages are six and a quarter by six and a quarter. So I didn't have to cut these down. And that was my purpose in making the book, the size that I did. So I'm just adhering all my papers. I wanted to keep the inside of this album very simple just to go ahead and add photos to. On most of the pages, I'm adding the back side of the paper because they match very well. Some of them I'm not. I just did what I liked, actually. So I'm using ATG to adhere them down. That's strong enough for me. And now for the back covers, my back covers were six and three quarters by seven. So I didn't want that much of a black border. So I'm adding some basil pink paper as a border piece. And then I'll go ahead and add my pattern paper to the top of that. And then I end up making pockets on the front and back cover. Again, same for the front and back cover. I added a piece of pink cardstock that matched perfectly. And when I'm adhering them down, I like to remove the tape just from one one side I usually do the top and then you can kind of move it around to get it perfectly centered where you want before you remove the rest of the tape it's a great way to get your papers centered perfectly if you take the tape down or take the tape backing off of all of them once you stick it down you're going to have to rip it back up and a lot of times it'll rip the paper so if you just do one edge first make sure it's where you want and then press that down then you can remove the rest of it and adhere it down so I do that with all these pieces here, even my matte pieces. Again, I did a black matte. I'm going to add the pattern paper to the back of the book and the front as well. I do, as you'll see here, I add a little tape ATG in the middle. I wasn't sure what I was doing on the front cover, so I wanted to make sure it was here down well in case I was doing something heavy. So now these are four and a half inch square photo mats that I'm adding to all the pages which a four by four Instagram photo or any photo will fit perfectly in these. And then I'm just cutting, I believe they were two and a quarter in height pockets. I'm adding one to the front and the back cover with some wet scotch quick dry adhesive. And this will hold some mats for more photos as well or journaling. Here's the scallop curved orders one die. I wanted to add this to the front. So I'm cutting the black piece of paper that matches the mat on the front of the cover, which is six and a quarter. So I cut it to six and a quarter wide, and then I'm just going to cut out this scallop border, really pretty border. I'm just cutting it out with my scissors since it didn't cut all the way to the edge. And I'm making another one for the bottom. And now I'm adding a piece of this cream color cardstock that I had in my stash, not measuring it, just going by what I like. I knew I wanted that to go across the middle of those two um, scallop borders. And I'm pulling out a Sizzix, I believe is the one I use, embossing folder because I wanted to give some texture to that cream piece of paper. So I ran it in one way and then just fed it through the other way to get the embossing across the entire piece. And I was really happy with how that looked. So I went ahead and adhered that down. I did decide I wanted to add a little bit more of that pink in it. So I added another pink border of that same Spellbinders scallop border edge. I was just checking out the idea if I wanted to put another pink piece of strip across that middle, but I end up not doing that. Here I'm pulling out some beautiful laces from Wild Orchid Crafts. I end up using a Guy Pure White lace. And here I decided I wanted to 
give a little dimension behind that center piece. So I'm cutting out some medium weight chipboard from the same border die. That way it it will um, hold up right there on the edges. And then I just basically piece together some pieces in the back, as you can see here. So it gives it just enough dimension. I was really happy with it. And I'm adhering that down with some Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. I saw a little edge I needed to cut off there. I'm also going to use the Fabri-Tac to adhere down my lace. I'm pulling out these gorgeous, pretty flory flowers. Absolutely love these flowers. They're, they come with several, several different colors. Pulled out three of the largest ones. I end up not using the third largest one. I end up pulling out a smaller one. Now I'm pulling out some large hip rose buds or rose buds. And here I own, that's the last piece of that lace I had. So I just cut it apart added a piece to the left side and added a piece to the right side because I knew that's all you would see of it. So I didn't worry about the rest of it. And that way it allowed me to be able to use that last piece that I had. It's a gorgeous lace. I'm pulling out lots of rose leaves. Again, all of this is from Wild Orchid Crafts. I'll be sure to link the products used down in the description box over on my blog as well. And you'll find links for all of that in the description box. And I'm just kind of playing around with how I want to place these down. That third one you saw me, the third pink flower, I end up ripping that one up because I just didn't like the size. I wanted something a little bit different. It was too pink right there for me, which you'll see in just a moment. So I'm just kind of tucking in the roses, or excuse me, the rose leaves. These I believe are the 40 millimeter. They come in different sizes. And if you're looking for a less green leaf, you can always tone them down with a little bit of ink, but I really wanted that green to stand out here. Here I'm using a gardenia and that's where I ripped up that flower and added that white there before I added some more pink. I wanted the white to kind of break it up. And with the gardenias, it comes with four layers with one flower. I usually rip them apart and add just two layers. And that way you get two flowers out of one flower that you would normally get. And it has a little bit lower profile. So again, just playing around, tucking things here and there, trying to decide what I like. And again, instead of adding another white rose bud, I decided to add the two-tone pink and ivory rose bud. That way it broke up the coloring just a little bit there. And here I'm adding another rosebud to the top in white. They're gorgeous. They're the large rosebuds that Wild Orchid Crafts offers. And I'm tucking in a couple of these pearl loop sprays. These are some of my favorite from Wild Orchid Crafts. They're so pretty to add in. So I tuck two at the top and then one at the bottom. I like to add either flowers or or um, embellishments in threes if I can, but I don't always go by that rule. If, if two looks better, then I'll just add two. So I'm just tucking those in, using hot glue to add everything down. And now I pulled out some hip rose buds. These are just my favorite filler type flowers. I'm using the white ones. They come in so many different colors and I'm just tucking a few here and there. With a mini album, the cover is usually the very last thing that I want to do. That way you don't damage it when you're working on the inside. As you can see, I tucked three of the flat black glitter balls. Those are my absolute favorite. You'll see me add those into most any project that I use. I just love the look of them. And then I added a little tiny flat back pearl to the center of that gardenia. I thought about adding one that had um, pink in it, but again, I wanted to just keep it soft. And now I'm scattering a few of their self-adhesive pearls. I did take off the backing on them and used glossy accents to make sure it adhered down. I did this fine last because I wasn't sure if I was going to use some trim, but I decided in the end to keep it simple. I added some of that pink basil cardstock, and now I'm using a little drawer pull that I had in my stash. I had to do that off camera because I set it in my lap to glue it down so I could make sure it was straight. And now I'm adding my mats using a Martha Stewart punch. And that's my album. Thank you so much for staying with me. Please check out Wild Orchid Crafts and all their amazing products. You'll find the links down in the description box. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. And thanks again for watching. <music>